break for a Hey y'all, it's your girl Miss G and you know what time it is. It's G time. It's time to get up, get active and get together. My purpose is to give advice, encourage change and empower success. The goal is for us to grow, elevate and excel. Everyday action is required for change and you have the power to create change. Let me say it again in case you didn't hear me. You have the power to create change. Not somebody else, not your mom and them, not your boo thing, but you, whatever change you want to make in your life, you have the power to do so. You have the power to do it for yourself. Even if that means having help and support from other people. Yes, you can have help and support. You can have them coming in and supporting you in this, but you have the power to create change. Ultimately, it's you. You are the one who is in control of that. So look, I was really contemplating on whether or not I was going to continue with my videos. You know, it's just been uh, one thing after another this year, um, starting just from the beginning in, in itself. It seemed like, you know, when January hit, you know how we make our plans. I tell you all the time, set a goal and make a plan on how to get it done. At the beginning of the year, it's very important for me to write down my goals, to create a vision board and to really utilize that vision board and those goals to get done the things that I want to accomplish in this year. I am very goal oriented. I am very driven. I am very motivated by personal and professional and family and uh, just multiple goals, right? I don't believe that there's just one set goal, but I look at goals and categories, like what I want to accomplish in my family this year or with my business this year or uh, spiritually this year or physically this year, emotionally this year, I, I really look at it in different areas. And so I create what I want to see. And I'm really, really, um, I don't want to say adamant, but maybe it is adamant. Maybe I'm adamant about creating what I want in my life because I don't believe nobody else can do it for, for me, just myself. Now, with all that being said, girl, y'all, honey, it's been a year, okay? <laughs> you make these goals, you set a plan, you like, this is what's going to happen. And life says, psych, <laughs> let me tell you what's really going to happen this year. Let me show you what's going to go down this year. You wasn't even ready. You wasn't prepared for it. You ain't know I had these surprises. And that's what happens. Now, I'm not one to re be really thrown off of those kind of life surprises or when life hits to be like, oh, well, this happened. I no longer can be successful. Let me tell you, I had a baby at 19 years old and I made a promise to myself and that baby 19 years ago that I was not going to stop my goals and settle for what was told of, of me to do or what was given to me, I was going to continue to be successful, even though there was a wrench in the plan. There was, you know, some barriers to um, how I could get those things accomplished because my life had taken a turn. And, you know, strategically trying to plan that out because not only did I believe that I was still worth everything that I know that I'm capable of, but I believe that that baby growing inside of my belly was worth everything that I had planned and all of the goals and the dreams and the visions that I knew could be possible. So I made another plan. Okay. One plan don't work. You make another plan. It's not like, okay, well that plan didn't work. So let me just stop it. I'll give up from here. No. Okay. I can't go to the traditional university. Like I set out. It wasn't just because I was pregnant. It was because I didn't have good grades too. You know, it was a lot of things going on, <laughs> but I made sure that what I wanted to see in my life, no matter how long it took, whether it was five years, whether it was 10 years, whether it was 15 years, whether it was 20 years, that I was going to still see it through. As long as I can wake up and still have breath in my body, there's no reason why I can't accomplish what I want to accomplish. It may have taken me a little bit longer, but you know what? I'm not stopping. So with all of that being said, Though I have the drive and the passion and the desire and sometimes the motivation, because we talk about that too on Miss G Talk, you know, the motivation, motivation on Mondays. Not all the time am I motivated. Not all the time do I want to get dressed and put a video together, mainly because I don't want to get dressed. 
<laughs> Look, I work from home. And so I get dressed because I have to get dressed. Sometimes the videos are, well, not sometimes, the videos are a bonus to my, my work. You know, my real work, not that this isn't real because this is real for me, but my nine to five, my business, you know, that's a different avenue. And so I have to prepare myself for that in a different way. The videos, this is what I enjoy doing outside of my regular job and work. And so, but not all the time am I motivated, whether it be because of the lack of support, whether it be because I don't really feel like getting dressed and throwing on some hair or whatever that looks like. Um, it is what it is. Sometimes I just don't feel like it. And recently I haven't felt like it. I just haven't felt like it. Taking that summer break was good because I needed a break. I needed to, to revisit my plan and look at my goals and take a step back. I had to check in with myself. The check-in is real, y'all. The check-in is real. And I discovered that I have been going through some things emotionally that I may not have been processing and kind of just trying to, you know, step over or look over because dealing with emotions, it's a process. <laughs> and sometimes not only is it a process, but it takes some energy. It takes some work. It takes some healthy coping skills. And not all the time do I want to use those healthy coping skills. Sometimes I just want to lay in my bed and cry and say whatever. But I know that even in that, I'm still processing. There still comes a time where I have to wipe some tears and look at my, my notebook and say, okay, now what am I going to do with this? Am I going to let this just sit here or am I going to move forward in it? So recently I posted something about feeling disconnected. And I have, I felt, I have felt very disconnected for a few months, just disconnected from social media, uh, disconnected from family, disconnected from friends, just disconnected. <laughs> and it could be because there's a lot of things going on in my life and some things um, I haven't shared yet. Not because I don't want to share them, but, but the, everything has a time. There's a time and a place. I don't just put up my business out there, just like I don't just put all my, my, my uh, pro pro professional business out there. Ooh. I, um, I take time with it. Sometimes you have to really be strategic in planning and, and, um, and look at timing. Timing is a, a good thing. Um, and so anyway, kind of going through those emotions, trying to check in with myself, like, well, how do I feel? Well, like I said, I've been feeling disconnected. Okay, well, why do you feel disconnected? I don't know, why am I feeling disconnected? So in my process of trying to understand what it is that I'm going through on top of what it is I'm going through, I, um, I looked at it this way. I'm a person who truly values connection and relationship. I love to connect with people. It's who I am. I am a sharer. <laughs> I am emotional. I am a giver, a helper. I like people, even when I don't like people. Because I can, you can like people when I like people at the same time. I, it's not that I don't like people. I don't like the things that people do. And sometimes that could be a, a, a real turnoff. And it can, it can be a very hard thing to want to continue to connect with people when you realize and understand just how nasty and dirty and manipulative and mean people can be sometimes it's discouraging especially um as someone who tries to influence this positive space it can be discouraging when you feel like you're you're struggling with this battle of trying to con convince or influence people that everybody's not like this and then you watch TV or you go around people and you see all the things happening and you're like, <sighs> who am I? Who am I to tell everybody that this isn't what's happening when they can visually see the bad things that are happening? And here I am just encouraging people to continue to be who they are and you have the power to create change. And then you see these things happening and you're like, man, that's kind of how it is as a mental health provider. Sometimes it's like advocating for mental health and encouraging people to seek mental health treatment. And you get out there and you post things about mental health and you're trying to educate and do psychoeducation of what these disorders and illnesses and what mental health is. 
And then it's like you take eight steps forward and then you hear somebody saying, you know, depression is in your head. What? Especially when they have a huge platform and you know that so many people are watching and, and listening and trust these individuals who are sharing the most irresponsible information ever with no background, no knowledge, no education on it. Just, this is what I believe. It can be discouraging. Like, really? Come on, leave that to the professionals. Let the professionals tell you. Stop going and seeking mental health advice from somebody that don't study and, and has no professionalism in mental health. Why? Why would I call my dentist and ask them about hair care? They, not my, they, they don't know how to do hair care. They may understand some things because they take care of their own hair, but their focus is on my teeth. So why would I call them and ask them something I should be calling my cosmetologist for? It just makes no sense. But, you know, that's just here nor there. That's some of the discouragement. That's some of the disconnection where you just feel like you are pushing towards a losing battle. And I know that's not true. I know that's not true, not at all. Because if we continue to work together, we continue to spread this message. Guess what? We can become stronger together. We are stronger together. And so I'm going to continue doing what I do. But I had to really look at why are you disconnected? What is causing you to, to feel disconnected? And like I said, I truly value relationships and connections. I, I, I love to talk to people and I am a talker. You know, one of my, since I started doing the resume, <laughs> I learned words, you know, how you Google different words to figure out what they mean and whatnot. I know that I'm a very talkative person and I can sit there and have a conversation with anybody regardless of the topic. One, because I value other people's opinions, even if I don't agree with them. You know, it's part of active listening skills. I don't have to agree with you to have a conversation with you. Um, but on top of that, you know, I feel like social media has been a very, it, it has been, I've been very mm, turned off from social media, mainly because I feel like it gives a, a false sense of hope or it gives What's the word I'm looking for? Let me just tell you, fake, fake. It gives a fake perception of relationship and connection. It's like you see people commenting and liking and all those things on your post. And yet you ain't spoke to these people in years, let alone, um, you know, having a relationship. You're like, wait, hold on, I ain't seen you and I don't know how long. But now all of a sudden you can like, share, repost, tell people that you know all of what's going on. You don't know what's going on in my life. You've seen what I posted in my life. What makes you think that you have the right to repost my pictures and share what's going on in my life with no connection? That bothers me. And I, you know, I got my own issues. I got, I got my own things that I got to deal with. But that right there is something that really, truly gets under my skin. It's the fake relationships on social media with no relationships in real life. And I understand that social media has its uh, pros and its cons, but I believe that just like text messaging, it takes away from the, the authentic conversation. We can read something completely different in a text message because we don't really know the tone and the intent and what another person is saying. And we can misread it based on our perception of what we think they're saying, just like social media. We can think that these people have wonderful relationships and marriages and successful businesses because of the pictures that they post. Look, a picture speaks a thousand words, but it is nothing compared to a true, authentic, genuine relationship with a person. You may see the things that I post on social media and know a little bit about what my summer was like, but you have no idea unless you have a real connection and a real relationship with me. And I have shared what the summer really looked like, good, bad, and ugly. You know, not all the time are people just willing to share with you the good, bad, and ugly on social media. And as a mental health provider, I say good for them because everybody don't know, no, don't need to know the good, bad, and ugly of what's happening in your life. Everybody is not a safe place for the good, bad, and ugly in your life. It's so important to set healthy boundaries and not have these porous boundaries of just telling people everything that's going on. Not everybody is for you. And that's, for me, as a person, like I said, I'm very emotional and I, and I love connection. That has been the hardest thing for me, the hardest concept for me to get in my life. 
is understanding that everybody ain't for you. Even when you're for them, even when you want the best for them, even when you are open and willing and honest to share your true self, not everybody is sharing that with you. And so you have to be very um, conscious about um, having healthy boundaries and setting those healthy boundaries, even in sharing the things that you have with other people. You don't know their intent and how they plan on using that information. Now, I can tell you right now, I don't care. Do what you want. Say what you want. You can go and tell people what you want about me. It won't affect my life one way or another. It might professionally, but it doesn't really have any, you know, weight for me. You know, people are going to talk, but it still doesn't mean that I am just a open book and saying that I'm going to just say what I want to say, how I want to say it, because I don't care what people say. No, I'm still co conscious. Why are you getting this word mixed up? I want to say cognizant, and that's why I keep messing it up. <laughs> I'm still aware. Anything that I have said or I say, um, I know what I said. I might talk a lot, but I, I know what I'm talking about, and I know what I'm saying. I'm not just out here talking all willy-nilly and saying things to people without any content, any content or any awareness of how it may affect um, myself. Um, I work way too hard to sit here and just be loosey-goosey with my, my thoughts and um, my words. No, ma'am. Mm -mm, that's not happening with me. Um, like I said, strategic, <laughs> but not in a way that, that, you know, affects personal relationships. I know who I can be my true authentic self with. And know who I can share the good, bad, and ugly with, raw and uncut. And I know that those people are going to love me the same, whether I'm sharing a heavy emotion with them or a positive emotion. You know, my pastor, Vince Holmes, said something in a message um, a few months ago where he talked about people not really sharing and being um, like sharing their emotions and being real with others because it's not a safe place. And I agree, you know, social media may not be the safest place for you to share all your emotions with or to, because you don't know how people are gonna perceive that. But you know, I also have discovered that in real life, people haven't been the safest to share with. You know, I talked about toxic positivity before. You know, I tell you guys all the time, I am purposely positive and I make no excuses, absolutely. I am purposely positive, but that doesn't mean that I operate in toxic positivity. If you're feeling hurt, let's talk about you feeling hurt. If you're angry, let's be angry. I'm not one to tell you that you shouldn't feel angry. Why, why shouldn't you? It's an emotion. It's an emotion that we all feel. And so identify that emotion and let's process that, that emotion. Anger is not a bad thing. It's what you do when you're angry that causes a bad thing. So maybe if we had more opportunity of saying that I'm angry and actually being supported in that anger, we can actually live out and process that anger and express it in a healthy way without going out here and slapping folks. But you know, I'm just a mental health professional, what I know. Emotional health, healthy emotional expression. <laughs> you know, we were taught from an early age not to trust our emotions. I remember. And I don't know, I can say, I can't speak for myself, but, you know, have you ever seen a kid fall down and scrape their knee? And the first thing the parent says, you're okay. You're okay. Don't cry. You're okay. And they're like, mm, don't cry. Don't cry. And I'm always like, why not? They just scraped their knee. Cry. Did it hurt? If it hurt, cry. And maybe that's not how you want to express the emotion. But if it hurts, say, shit, it hurt. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. That hurt. But we're like, no, 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 no. Don't say it hurt. Shake it off. Shake it off. You better shake it off. We don't want them to be weak. And I'm like, wow. When did we start connecting, identifying with true emotions to weakness? Oh, I love when people tell me I'm not emotional. Oh, okay. What that mean? I'm not emotional. Does that mean that you don't know how to identify your emotions? that you have no emotional awareness, that you don't know how to check in with yourself and say, what am I feeling? You know, checking is real. You can't check in with yourself. How are you real with somebody else? We out here preaching and teaching and mentoring people, but yet we don't know how to check in with our own emotions. How are you helping? How are you out here helping people, but you don't know how to help yourself? 
that's a little weird to me. That's a little strange to me. I won't check in with my own emotions and I won't really identify them and I don't even know how to openly express them. But here I am out here teaching people how to do it. Interesting. Wow. So where, when did you learn how to do it? How did you learn? How, what, what, what skills have you developed, whether professionally or ex, with experience or education to be able to demonstrate and model healthy emotional expression if you're not expressing it in a healthy way yourself? You know, that's just a question that I have. I'm very uh, observant in that way. I shut down emotions and yet I'm out here telling people um, how to live. Mm. I wonder what Dr. Handy will say about that. We might need to have a, another uh, podcast on a healthy emotional expression and, and actually go on to people who know how to express their emotions in order for you to, to learn how, but you know, that's another story. We're out here learning how to save face and put on a brave face and to make sure that the presentation looks nice. And then on the inside, we're dying, we're hurting, we're broken. And yet we can't express that to people because People don't know how to handle those emotions. They get scared by those emotions. They start shutting you down with those emotions. They start isolating you because of those emotions. Mm, that's a problem for me. So I become disconnected. Like what? So when the going get tough, we get going? I thought we were supposed to be there. I thought we were supposed to be right there in the midst of the crisis helping people to get through it. But we put our hands up. We like, mm, I don't know what that looks like. Mm, that's too much. I, I can't jeopardize myself for that. What? That to me just seems very weird. And then I have to check in with myself and say, what are we doing? What am I doing? Am I really out here and helping the way that I promote, the way that I advocate? Because if I'm not, we need to go ahead and do something about it because I'm not about that. I'm not about that toxic positivity. I'm not telling you that you don't have the right to feel any negative emotion. I'm telling you, let's learn how to identify and express that emotion in a healthy way. Let's learn some positive strategic um, coping skills and mechanisms. And if we need to seek professional help, let's seek professional help. Let's learn some cognitive behavioral interventions. Let's work on some um, emotional strategies. Let's look at those things. But I know everybody doesn't agree with that. And I'm okay with it, I'm all right. But it has made me think and question, what are we doing? I don't wanna be the same unhealthy person. I don't want to be that person saying something but not executing it or living it. I don't want to just show up on these videos and give y'all these messages and have nothing to follow through with it. That doesn't work for me. I don't want to pretend like we have these wonderful relationships on social media and then at the end of the day when all hell is breaking through in my life and I'm crying I don't have nobody to talk to that's weird to me what we can talk on social media but you can't call me that's weird I'm like I'm not, I'm not with this I want to develop and create healthy relationships social media and beyond but I would rather focus on the beyond social media is just a plus it's just a like, oh, I already knew about those pictures and those vacations because I've talked to her already. Not like, oh, wow, all those things have been going on. It's been birthdays and stuff. I don't even know. No, 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 no. That doesn't work for me. So I had to check in because the check in is real. Where are you at, Chris? Where are you at, Miss G? What you doing, Miss G? I don't know yet. We're in September already. I'm like, wow. Okay, it's almost the end of the year. The check in is real. Website is coming soon, September 1st. There are a lot of things that are coming with this website. They may not all be shared on the Instagram or the Facebook, but if you go to the website, you will see the services that are being provided. You can check in on the calendar and see what's happening. 
There's a lot happening, but I want to make sure that I'm doing it in a way that is reaching the people in my business life and in this influencing life. But I also want to make sure that I'm not just here. I'm not just another person out here talking because it means something to me. It really does. And before I can actually give you something real and authentic and helpful, I gotta be real and authentic with myself and check in first. And if I'm not in a healthy place, I'm sure not, the, not about to be out here just bleeding on y'all with my own issues and mess. That's not helpful to me and it's not helpful to you. So I encourage you as we enter into a new month, check in with yourself. Where are you at? It's almost the end of the year. Look at those goals. Look at your plans. Did you have to deviate from the plan? And if you had to deviate, did you come up with a new plan and a new strategy? Or did you say, oh, the plan failed. Whatever, we'll wait till next year. <laughs> no, you still got some months ahead of you. Look at your goals and see if you are where you want to be. And if you're not, take that step forward to be where you want to be. Everyday action is required for change and you have the power to create change. But be real with yourself. I didn't do everything that I planned to do. Check in and say, you know what? I let some things fall by the wayside. Check in. Say, you know what? This has been a very hard year for me. I had to put some things on the back burner because I had to really deal with my emotions this year. It wasn't about professional gain for me. It was about being emotionally healthy because if I'm not emotionally healthy then I can't sit here and, and and make my business flourish because I'm already I'm hurting here that means that it's going to affect me here and it's definitely going to affect my relationship with people my professional and personal I'm gonna have a, a, a slew of um, employees that can't stand me because I don't know how to regulate my emotions I'm, I'm hot and cold and they like I don't know I can't deal with this check in with yourself because the check-in is real. Y'all have a blessed day. It's Miss G, y'all. And I'm still going to be here. I don't know what day and I don't know what time. But I'm going to make sure that when I am, I'll let you know. I holla. <laughs> y'all have a blessed one. It's time to get up, get active, and get it.